Dear students, in the past modules, we have been studying about crime scene, significance of crime scene, types of crime scene, types of physical evidences, and types of trace evidences. After studying this module, you shall be able to learn about problems encountered at the crime scene, reconstruction of the crime scene, importance of crime scene reconstruction, stages in reconstruction of crime scene, types of reconstruction and do's and don'ts while writing a reconstruction report. First, we shall start with the problems encountered at the crime scene. The crime scene investigator works at the crime scene including collection of forensic evidences. A crime scene investigator must be systematically complete in specific investigation. There are a number of problems which a crime scene investigator faces at the crime scene from the time of arrival at the scene till the crime scene releases from the custody of police officers. These problems make their job more difficult. Education and training reduce the mistakes made at the crime scene. The best we can do is to minimize the mistakes made at the crime scenes through proper education and training. The problems are first, curious onlookers. When you introduce humans, you introduce human error. Curious onlookers can cause major problems for crime scene investigators. Curious onlookers can be an eyewitness, general public, friends and relatives of victim, media people, etc. These people can leave items at the crime scene which can interfere in his job. At some crime scenes, especially in case of high profile cases, curious onlookers become unmanageable. It causes problems to the police force and crime scene investigator in recording of the crime scene. Some specific areas need more presence of police so as to control the perimeter of the crime scene and also to allow the crime scene investigators to carry on with their investigations safely and effectively. For the proper documentation and preservation of the crime scene, unnecessary access of public and police personnel should be avoided. Locard's principle identified that when two objects come into contact, there is an exchange and they leave a trace of each other. The scene must be secured until the lead detectives and crime scene experts attend and provide further directions. A defense often used in trials is that the police contaminated or failed to control a crime scene. And this situation can be avoided if the investigators stick to protocols of preservation of scene of crime that includes protective clothing to be worn by every staff member. A log has to be maintained such that the access to the crime scene by the individual his or her exit time and also the purpose of entering the scene of crime is known. Challenge and refuse entry of any person who has no genuine cause of entering including senior officers. If the scene has been altered in any way, don't try to recreate that scene. It should be noted that the crime scene can never be reconstructed and any effort may result in significant changes that might disturb the results of investigation. If the scene is recreated, then it becomes perceived as a cover-up. If someone else sees you to do it or helps you recreate it, then it becomes perceived as a conspiracy. Second, contamination. Crime scenes are usually fragile. Anybody's presence, including the presence of police investigators, put evidence in threat of being tainted or ruined. Till the completion of the investigation, only a minimal number of people should be allowed at the scene. Fingerprints and other evidential items can be smeared and destroyed by careless investigators and other technicians. A log must be maintained at the crime scene which keeps record of the each investigator's present activities and fingerprints so they will not be confused with other evidences. As discussed initially, the biggest problem encountered in crime scene investigations is 
too many non-essential person in the crime scene. These person often contaminate the crime scene. Unfortunately, the bulk of the non-essential person are often police officer. Once the scene has been stabilized and the victim is either removed from the scene or declared dead at the scene, then everyone including police officers must be removed from the scene as soon as possible. The scene must be secured until the detectives and crime scene investigators arrive. Until they arrive, no one including sightseeing police officers regardless of rank should be allowed to go into the scene. Non-essential person will either inadvertently disrupt some portion of the crime scene or they will give the impression that something has been disrupted. One of the most popular lines used by defense attorneys and the media during the trial is that the police contaminated, disrupted or tainted or otherwise screwed up the scene of crime. By eliminating the non-essential personnel in the scene once the situation is stable, then the police contamination statement has no validity. Third is accessibility. Hard to reach crime scenes can present a problem. Some crime scenes may be difficult to reach due to weather factors, distance or due to many other reasons. The knowledge of the distance of the crime scene must be given to crime scene investigator so that they can prepare themselves with appropriate equipment. In case the scene of crime is at some rural place, the crime scene investigators must take into consideration that climatic changes and animal activity can pose problems with the decomposition time and can also result in variable changes in the evidence. Fourth, removal of evidence. Sometimes the investigators at the scene of crime may not be able to respond in a timely manner. And then the higher level police officers might give orders for removal of evidence from the crime scene. This can present multiple problems for the technician as the evidence may not have been collected properly. Hence, during the removal of evidence, the police investigators are needed to take photographs of evidences before it is moved and should talk over with the investigators so as to determine the exact positioning of the evidence and reasons pertaining to the removal of the evidence. Fifth, communication. Another major problem is the lack of communication at crime scenes. The first responding officers must report everything they have observed including their actions at the scene, the paramedics actions, the victims actions, the suspects actions and any other actions taken at the scene. This information must be communicated to the detectives and crime scene investigators. The detectives and the crime scene investigators must work and communicate with the coroners or medical examiners investigators so they can properly perform their job when dealing with a deceased individual. While in return, the pathologist conducting the autopsy should communicate the results of examination with the investigators of crime scene, the police officers and forensic scientists in the crime lab. The detectives and crime scene investigators must also communicate with the forensic scientists so that the evidence can be analyzed properly to obtain the maximum amount of information in the investigation. The forensic scientists give the results of the analysis to the detectives so that the investigation can be completed. Finally, everyone involved in the case must have a two-way communication with the district attorney's office. Lack of communication can hamper the final disposition of a case. Sixth, neglecting the hidden and potential evidence. Another common problem encountered in crime scene investigations is that no one checks the floor or the ground prior to entering the scene. Crime scene investigators should examine the ground using oblique or side lighting so that shoe prints and other evidence that end up on the ground can be more easily visualized and preserved. This should be done even if a million people have been in the scene. Now we'll start with crime scene reconstruction. 
First, the introduction. Crime scene reconstruction is a process which determines or eliminates the events or actions occurred at the crime scene. The basis of crime scene reconstruction is the location and position of the physical evidences. The analysis of the crime scene pattern and the laboratory examination of the physical evidences. Besides scientific scene analysis, interpretation of the scene, pattern evidence and laboratory examination of physical evidence. Reconstruction also involves systematic study of related information and the logical formulation of a theory. Crime scene reconstruction is the forensic science discipline in which one gains explicit knowledge of the series of events that surround the commission of a crime using deductive and inductive reasoning, physical evidence, scientific methods and their interrelationships. It can also be described as putting together a puzzle without knowing what the picture is supposed to look like and without even having all of the pieces. The more pieces you have, the more clearly you see the picture. It is the job of a crime scene reconstructionist to find the pieces and put them together. The crime scene reconstructionist seeks to determine what happened, how did it happen, where did it happen, why did it happen, when did it happen and who was involved. Now we shall discuss about the importance of crime scene reconstruction. Reconstruction is partly based on the scientific experimentation and partly on past experiences. Logic, careful observation and considerable experience both in crime scene investigation and forensic examination of physical evidence are necessary for proper interpretation, analysis and crime scene reconstruction. Crime scene reconstruction is often useful to determine the actual course of a crime by limiting the possibilities that resulted in the crime scene or the physical evidence as encountered. The crime scene is also reconstructed to maintain the integrity of a crime scene. Reconstruction is based on the ability to make observations at the scene. The scientific ability to examine physical evidence and the use of logical approaches to theory formulations. Proper crime scene reconstruction is conducted in three phases. First phase is investigation, second is analysis and third is reconstruction. First, investigation. The crime scene is examined and documented to determine what evidence is present without consideration to the particular meaning of any of the evidence. Second, analysis. Individual items of evidence or groups of related evidence are examined to determine their individual significance without respect to how those items fit into the overall reconstruction of the crime. Third, reconstruction. All evidence including testimonial and documentary evidence is taken into consideration to determine how the crime took place. The overriding concern here is context. Now we shall start or we shall see what are the stages in reconstruction. Reconstruction is considered a scientific fact gathering process and usually consists of various actions that will help in reconstruction of crime scene. The following are the five separate stages commonly used in the process of reconstruction. First, data collection. All information or documentation information obtained at the crime scene from the victim or witnesses, data including condition of the evidence, obvious patterns and impressions, condition of the victim, etc. are reviewed, organized and studied. Second, conjecture. The sequence of events involved in the crime needs a possible elucidation and conjecture before any comprehensive investigation of the evidence is done. But it must not become the only explanation being considered at this stage. It is only a possibility. There may be several more possible explanations too. Third, hypothesis formulation. 
further accumulation of data is based on the examination of the physical evidence and the continuing investigation. It also involves the examination of the crime scene and assessment of the physical evidence. Scene and evidence examination includes interpretation of blood stain and impression patterns, gunshot pattern, fingerprint evidence and analysis of trace evidence. This process leads to the formulation of an educated guess as to the probable course of events, a hypothesis. Fourth, testing. Once a hypothesis is formulated, further testing must be done to confirm or disprove the overall interpretation or specific aspects of the hypothesis. This stage includes comparisons of samples collected at the scene with known standards and alibi samples, chemical, microscopial and other analysis and testing. Control testing or experimentation of possible physical activity must be done to collaborate the reconstruction hypothesis. Fifth is theory formation. Additional information may be acquired during the investigation about the condition of the victim or suspect the activities of the individuals involved, accuracy of witnesses accounts and other information about the circumstances surrounding the events. All the verifiable investigative information, physical evidence analysis and interpretation and experimental results must be considered in testing and attempting to verify the hypothesis. When it has been thoroughly tested and verified by analysis, it can be considered a plausible theory. Types of reconstruction. There are many types of reconstruction. It depends on the nature of the crime, the types of events that have taken place, the questions needing to be answered and the reconstruction that is based on the degree of involvement of the reconstructionist. Classifications of reconstruction types. First, specific type of incident reconstruction. First is accident reconstruction. Other transportation accident reconstruction such as trains, airplanes, boat accidents etc. Industrial or construction accident reconstruction. On the job or employee accidents, building collapses, machinery etc. Traffic accident reconstruction like automobiles, trucks, motorcycles etc. Second is specific crime reconstruction, arson scene reconstruction, white collar crime reconstruction, homicide reconstruction, rape case reconstruction. Now specific events reconstruction, sequence determination, directional determination, position determination, relational determination, conditional determination and identity determination. Next is degree of involvement reconstruction, total case reconstruction, partial case reconstruction, limited event reconstruction, specific pattern reconstruction. Next is specific type of physical evidence reconstruction, pattern evidence, shooting investigation evidence and serological evidence. Now we shall see what are the do's and don'ts while writing a reconstruction report. A reconstruction report must be reviewed and signed by two examiners. State what materials reviewed and used as a basis for the report. It should be accurate. It should be in agreement with notes taken during the review and reconstruction process. Do not interject or rely on unvalidated information. Clearly state any relevant facts or circumstances not known to you. Now we shall see or we shall conclude this module with a summary. Curious onlookers, contamination, accessibility, removal of evidence, communication and neglecting of the hidden and potential evidence are few problems which an investigating officers encounter at the crime scene. The crime scene reconstructionist seeks to determine what happened, how did it happen, where did it happen, why did it happen, when did it happen, 
who was involved and other relevant questions. Proper crime reconstruction is conducted in three phases, namely investigation, analysis and reconstruction. The five separate stages commonly used in the process of reconstruction are data collection, conjecture, hypothesis formulation, testing and theory formation. Accident reconstruction includes reconstruction of transportation accident, industrial or construction accident reconstruction and traffic accident reconstruction. Specific crime reconstruction of arson scene reconstruction, white collar crime reconstruction, homicide reconstruction and rape case reconstruction. Specific event reconstruction involves reconstruction of sequence determination, directional determination, position determination, relational determination and conditional determination and also identity determination. Degree of involvement reconstruction includes total case reconstruction, partial case reconstruction, limited event reconstruction and specific pattern reconstruction. Specific type of physical evidence reconstruction includes pattern evidence, shooting investigation evidence and serological evidence. A reconstruction report must be reviewed and signed by two examiners. A reconstruction report must state what materials were reviewed and used as a basis for the report. A reconstruction report must be accurate. A reconstruction report must be in agreement with notes taken during the review and reconstruction process. A reconstruction report does not interject or rely on unvalidated information. A reconstruction report should clearly state any relevant facts or circumstances not known to you.